Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. The first topic involves supplements that are used for athletes. And I'm just going to start by saying some of the worst dietary advice in the world is given to athletes of all ages. And the misinformation starts young. I mean, kids in middle and high school um, are often instructed by well-meaning coaches to eat more protein, to use sports drinks for hydration, and to consume dairy products to build strong bones. Supplements are almost recommended by trainers and bodybuilders uh, and for other college athletes with the promise that they contribute to more rapid muscle development and better performance. Diet and supplement recommendations are delivered with the implication that results are virtually assured and almost never with any type of explanation uh, of risks or that there are even any risks associated with taking them. Furthermore, other dietary patterns, such as one that might be a little more plant-based, are never discussed except when they're being completely dismissed as not adequate for helping athletes to train and perform. Hence the question that comes up all the time, so how does an athlete get more protein if they eat a plant-based diet, right? You guys are all familiar with that. All right, supplements in particular are a concern, and the results of a new study should make people even more cautious about taking them. The study included 356 men who had testicular cancer and 513 controls. Researchers looked at a lot of factors, including exercise, smoking, drinking, family history, and the use of supplements. Supplement use was defined as consumption of at least once per week or for four consecutive weeks, and data for 30 different types of supplements were included. The researchers concluded that muscle building supplements, particularly those that contained creatinine, protein, testosterone boosting uh, drugs, significantly increased the risk of testicular germ cell cancer. The lead researcher said, and I'm quoting him here, he said the observed relationship was strong. If you use them at an earlier age, you had a higher risk. If you use them longer, you had a higher risk. If you used multiple types, you had a higher risk. The researchers also noted that many supplements contain unknown ingredients that can increase the risk of cancer, citing a study that said that 15% of supplements that didn't include hormones on the label actually contained anabolic androgenic steroids, which have been associated with testicular cancer in animal studies. The incidence of testicular germ cell cancer is going up in both the United States and Europe, and it's the most common malignancy in men between the ages of 15 and 39 years of age. Now, I am certain that many other things are also factors, many other risk factors uh, contribute, including poor diet. But supplements to boost sports performance increase the risk even more, and they really should be avoided. In my opinion, athletes should be informed that optimal performance can be achieved without high-protein diets and supplements. And in fact, many athletes, more and more of them all the time, and I think this is encouraging, are starting to note and begin to practice uh, eating a plant-based diet because they say it improves their performance. Athletes do not need to choose between optimal performance or optimal diet. In fact, optimal diet can lead to optimal performance. So that's one thing. And uh, you know, this is another continuing theme, no matter how much we talk about it, athletes just take an enormous number of supplements as a population, not all of them, of course, but as a group, they're famous for taking supplements. And they're also famous for sacrificing long-term health for short-term gain. And uh, I've never had a sick athlete in the office that thought it was a, a good payoff when they come down with something terrible, like cancer. All right. Next topic, acetaminophen, which I'm talking about a lot lately, and you'll see why here. Acetaminophen is the main ingredient in Tylenol, a very popular pain reliever. It's available over the counter. Most people think it's safe. I think there's an association with over the counter and safety that people make in their heads. Um, and unfortunately, advertising campaigns promote these pain relievers, including acetaminophen, as okay for daily use. You see all these people on television living their life, having a great time, taking pain pills every day in order to keep going when there would really be better ways to address chronic pain. But acetaminophen and other common pain relievers are drugs, and all drugs, including the ones over the counter, have side effects. And acetaminophen is more dangerous than many. Acetaminophen poisoning is one of the most common poisonings throughout the world. It's surprisingly easy to overdose on the drug, particularly for petite lean women. In 2009, the FDA mandated that manufacturers of products containing acetaminophen post warnings on the label about the risk for liver damage from taking too much, 
And the agency also issued an advisory to healthcare providers to prescribe lower doses in order to avoid liver toxicity. Um, the FDA, I love this, they asked manufacturers to reduce the dosage per pill down to 325 milligrams. I mean, I, I really get tired of the FDA making suggestions about these things. We should be counting on them to take actions that protect public health. Well, there are other serious side effects of acetaminophen, and new ones continue to be identified, and sometimes they're shown as benefits. So a new study shows that taking the pills can dull emotional response. Researchers at Ohio State University conducted two studies in which half of the subjects took 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen and half took a placebo. All of the participants were then shown pictures selected specifically to stimulate emotional response. Uh, all participants were then asked what they thought. So there were unpleasant uh, images, such as starving children, some that were neutral, and then some that were definitely positive, such as children playing with kittens. The subjects were asked to rate how positive or negative the pictures were and to rate their emotional reactions. The subject who, subjects who took the drug rated their responses and emotional reactions, both negative and positive, as being less extreme than the subjects who took placebo. In other words, their responses were dulled as a result of taking the drug. Researcher Baldwin Way said, quote, people who took acetaminophen didn't feel the same highs or lows as the people who took placebos. The drug, the, drug sub the drug subjects, however, were not aware that there was any difference in the way that they were responding. Researcher Jeffrey Durso commented that, quote, rather than just being a pain reliever, acetaminophen can be seen as an all-purpose emotion reliever. Are you kidding me? This is just what we need, a drug that is so easy to overdose on, and we're now we're gonna have people taking it in addition to pain, they're gonna take it to relieve their depression or their anxiety. Um, I, I mean, it just defies logic that this guy could even suggest such a thing. And then he went on to add that we don't know if other uh, pain relievers like ibuprofen and aspirin have the same effect, but he and his colleagues plan to conduct research on that too. Of course, we'll get some more money from the National Institutes of Health to do more ridiculous, useless research. I mean, it just makes your head hurt after a while, you know what I mean? But my real concern is that in the meantime, uh, I know that the, because this happened at Ohio State University, it was on the front page of the Columbus newspaper. I have seen it on several uh, medical sites. I'm just concerned that a drug that all, already is responsible for most or a lot of liver toxicity, easy to overdose on, et cetera, is now going to be used even more liberally, and that's certainly not a good idea. So if you have chronic pain, get to the root of why, fix it. And sometimes people ask me, well my gosh, you know, if I took Tylenol once a year for a headache, is that a problem? And I really don't think so. Um, the problem is when you're taking Tylenol or you're taking aspirin or you're taking some pain reliever all the time because you always have headaches, because you always have knee pain, because your back always hurts, that's when this is a problem, all right? so. That's all for today. In fact, it's all for the week. Um, if you're a member, check out the member's website. Remember, we post new videos every Wednesday, and there is so much good stuff to see about exercise and about cooking and interviews with people. Um, really great. So you can, there are 140 hours, I think, of stuff, of workshops on there. So you'll never run out of good stuff to watch. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again on Tuesday.